Welcome to Local SEO Tactics, where we bring you tips and tricks to get found online. I am producer Caleb Bumgartner. Is your website showing outdated stock? Missing calls to action? All these things and more can be hurting your business. Bob, Jesse, and Sue explain how to take your website from an online brochure to a member of your sales team to maximize your ROI. As always, if you have questions for the Local SEO Tactics team, contact us. You could win an Intrix t-shirt. Thank you for listening and enjoy the show. Welcome back to Local SEO Tactics, where we bring you tips and tricks to get found online. I'm your host, Jesse Dolan, here another with another uh, question and answer uh, format here with Bob Brennan and Sue Ginsberg. Sue, we've been asking the last few episodes um, where you are virtually, and we are just joking right before we started recording. Uh, Bob asked where in the world you are, and uh, you are not. You are not on this planet right now, uh, according to your background. What's going on there? That's right. That's right. From somewhere in the Milky Way, floating around, <laughs> the significance is the topic we're talking about today can truly transform our listeners' business so that they are shooting stars. And that is why you see the background behind me today. Nice. Nice. So Sue is the shooting star then, I think, Bob, is what she's saying. Like, I, I, I get it. I believe it. That's, <laughs> I'll give her that. I'll work on that. Right, right, right. No, I, I'm, I'm just joking around, but... Uh, I guess, like I said in the last episode too, for anybody, if you're listening to this on the audio version of the podcast, uh, we do record these uh, as well uh, via Zoom. You can check it out on YouTube and see what we're talking about. Uh, you can also see Bob and Mai's uh, mug too, for what it's worth. But um, so that aside, Sue, why don't you go ahead and, and kick us off? Okay. Um, so to become a shooting star, today we're talking about is your website part of your sales team? What what which part of your sales team is your web website and can it be? What I wanna talk about today is making sure that everybody understands the powerful sales role that your website can play. And I'm not talking about e-commerce here, I'm talking about your website acting as a selling tool for your business. And what we find is why isn't, uh, I guess to answer the question, why isn't every website acting as a strong selling tool for every business out there? Well, to start with, lack of understanding of the role that your website can play. Maybe people don't realize that it does have the capacity to be a strong selling tool for your business. It also could be not building SEO into the website from the start and not realizing that that can never change. It could be you have an outdated website and it, it isn't up to par with where your business is and therefore can't be selling everything that your business is selling because it's outdated. Could be businesses that put up a website and never look at it again. And I think we all know some of those and maybe we've even been one of those. Um, your website can be missing calls to action. You can not be, not be found for the things that you want to be found for. Uh, so that makes it pretty hard for your website to be selling those things for you. Lack of engagement, lack of interaction on the website, not asking for the sale. Uh, a lot of different reasons, each of them valid in their own way. But the bottom line is um, we want you to review your website with this question in mind. Is my website acting as a winning salesperson for my business? Because it can be. And if it isn't and you want it to be, then we can help you do that. And what's the result of that? Essentially, you're adding a sales channel to your business by making your website into a powerful salesperson for, for you and for your business. So the story that I'm going to start off with before I ask, ask Bob and Jesse what, what you have to say about this is many years ago, I was working with a law firm in Scotland a really good marketing firm, but their website had no interaction or it was not interactive at all, no calls to action other than the contact us page and essentially was what you hear people say, an online version of their brochure, which back in the day, that's that there was a time and a place for that. That time has long since passed us. So we worked on it added some downloadable papers, checklists that would be helpful to the ideal visitor, their ideal client visiting their site, um, some simple things, five questions to ask 
when you're considering hiring a lawyer, 10 things your website needs to be in compliance with privacy laws, et cetera, et cetera. And it made a huge different difference by essentially training their website to be a sales tool and a lead magnet for the clients that they wanted to attract. Um, and I know that people think of Jesse, Bob, and the Intrix team as being SEO experts. You may or may not realize that that's also a, there's also a place for that in rebuilding your website, retooling your website. And at any point in the life cycle of your website, you can make it into a powerful selling tool for you and for your business. So Bob, Jesse, what's your experience seeing websites as online brochures versus selling tool um, and or transforming them from an online brochure into a powerful sales role for the business? What, what do you see? What have you seen? Well, I, 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 it is, it's a very powerful tool. And I think we're, uh, we've made mistakes as a business in the past. Uh, Jesse and I own a, a couple small businesses is we failed to get our team involved in uh, the process. Uh, and when I say the process, all kinds of areas in, in terms of design, in terms of converting calls, in terms of really the beauty of the internet is you can really pinpoint the type of work you want uh, and, and be strategic about that. And so um, letting your team know the direction you're wanting to go. In other words, if there's a certain type of business that you want to get, uh, working with your team in, you know, and having that collaboration and having them understand that, okay, we're going to either, we're going to redesign and shoot an initiative for SEO for, let's just say Kenworth truck repair, because the Kenworth dealer in our town is charging $175 an hour and is backed up for three to four weeks. Therefore, we can charge $175 an hour and say, we can turn this around in 24 to 72 hours because that's what the market, and, and literally if they're calling you first because you're at the top and you can tell them we're $175 an hour, just so you know, we can turn your truck around in 24 to 72 hours or whatever, the, yeah, 24 to 72 hours and you're going to want to call the dealer after this, this conversation and find out where they're at, because I understand they're two to three, you know what I mean? But you've got to get your whole team on that, that cycle because, Hey, we're not only going to get you calls, but then when you get the calls, this is how you're going to convert them. And that's where your expertise comes in that voice of the customer, understanding the pain of the customer. So I hope that kind of is a, is an example with, um, how you need to get uh, the website as part of your, your, your overall um, team, you know, solution. That can be very difficult if you have an outside firm that's just dealing with the owner and the owner saying, okay, do this, 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 and this. And now the outside firm does some of this stuff. And then, but the rest of the team isn't in the, closing the loop on that. Does that kind of make sense? Totally. So we, we work with a, a, a client it does work in the in the truck uh, repair industry, and it's it's this Jesse actually works with them more than I do, but you know you can kind of speak to that environment a little bit, Jess, as far as what that looks like. I mean, what is your role, and how does how how do they do their meetings? Yeah, I think you know framing it up like you are. What's running through my head, you know, Sue's talking about your website being part of your sales team, and you're as you're extrapolating on that, it is part of your team, meaning that there's other people that are involved in the collaboration on it, right? It's not this standalone, you know, magical thing. Um, so within the construct of, of a collaboration with the customer, the client, like you're saying, it's um, basically the website is kind of the terminus point for all of your marketing, right? If you're pushing out email newsletters, you know, you're pushing people to your website, then as you know, the next action to take, learn more, go here or, in Sue's example, download this guide, you know, go here. You're always pushing people to your website, you know, from the other marketing you're doing. But then there's also the other side of the inbound marketing where people are searching for something. And having everybody that's involved with your sales team be a part of what's on the website, why does the website exist, what role is it playing, I think is really speaking to what you're saying. And the clients that we work with that are more in that spirit 
have better success because uh, their website isn't just like you said, what that owner or what that third party thought it should be. If that didn't align with the type of business that the client is trying to get, um, there's going to be, you know, it's going to be disjointed there. Um, and then there's also the type of client that we run into. And if this, anybody listening, if this speaks to you, um, I think this is a pretty important part that people miss. Um, we hear all the time, I'm kind of making a generalization here and, and Sue, I'm, I'm sure you see the same thing. You'll talk to somebody about, you should really maybe reinvest in your website, maybe give it a fresh coat of paint or, or redesign it or do some SEO to it, any of these things. And they'll say, well, I'm not, not really. I don't get my business from my website. I get my business from word of mouth referrals, my little black book, or everybody knows me or things like this, right? My yeah. website's not important. The thing I always tell to people is, okay, understand that. Um, and usually it's like, as an aside, it's like, okay, looking at your website, I can understand why you have that impression too. Cause you know, you obviously haven't paid any attention to this, but then the, the, the thing to really open your eyes is to say, okay, so maybe your website isn't a big part of your sales team right now for what you sell and what you provide. Do people go online and look for it? And if the answer is yes, then, okay. It's not so much that your website can't be a part of your business and part of your sales team. It's just that it isn't right now because it's not been on your radar. There are people going online right now today looking for your products and your services probably in your area. If they're not finding your website, that's why it's not part of your sales team. You can make your website be what they bump into. You can have it be part of your sales team and it can bring you new business if you choose to. Um, I'll tell people the same thing. Like if let's just say, I guess that's more of a, more of an analogy. If I don't have a salesperson on my staff, well, salespeople aren't part of my sales strategy, right? Just like if my website sucks, well, the website isn't part of my sales strategy. Well, guess what? If I had a salesperson, they're going to be selling. And now that is part of my sales strategy. So it's not so much that it is or it isn't. It just needs to be part of your sales strategy. Again, the qualifier is if people go online to Google and look for your products or services, um, is that a thing that happens? And if the answer is yes, then your website, uh, like Sue's saying, needs to not only exist, but maybe it need to be updated and redesigned, optimized, and then kind of to your point, Bob, bring in the rest of your team, you know, check with the voice of the customer, check with the voice of your employees and make sure the website is providing this overall sales function, lead generation, answering questions, uh, and things like that. So, um, at the end of the day, and I really like your shooting star, uh, analogies to because the cool part is if you're sitting there and your website is not part of your sales team right now, you're going to see results. <laughs> you know what I mean? If it's not on your radar and just not producing, you throw some money at it, not as an expense, but as an investment, it's going to return that back to you and it will become part of your sales team. So. And Jesse, I'll, I'll add to something you just mentioned. Um, even when somebody recommends a service to me, orthopedic surgeon or whatever it is, we all ask our friends, family, trusted advisors. Yeah. When I get that recommendation, first thing I do is go online, still gonna go online. I'm looking to see, oh, did they hear me right? Or did, did they think I meant, uh, did they think I meant orthopedic shoes? I don't know. I mean, I'm always gonna go online and check out the recommendation to see, do they do what I do? Um, what are the reviews saying? And whether it's somebody who I fully, fully trust or not, I want to go see what they have to say on their website and at least help help me want to call you yep. just by whatever you put on your website. Right. Yeah. It has to align. Just like Matt was saying, it's got to it's gotta make sense in all, all those areas to really be part of that team. So mm -hmm. um, I think we're pretty good on, on kind of answering it. Did you have any closing thoughts, Sue, or anything else to add to it? I have my thought starter for this episode, episode, which is a quote from Albert Einstein. Everybody knows who he is. If you want different results, you need to do different things. And if you remember one thing and one thing only from our discussion here today, it's for most businesses, a website is the biggest marketing investment that your, your business is going to make. Don't just put it out there and forget about it. Uh, that is not a good use of your investment. And presumably you'd like to get a good ROI on that. And the way to do that is to be strategic about it, to get your team on board, like Bob said, and do what you can do 
to make that website be your best salesperson because that is possible. It's possible, it's viable. And the smarter you can be with doing that, the more it's going to pull in prospects, leads, and business for you. It's perfect. I want to add one more thing, Bob, you always say this. And I think it's, it's relevant for everybody to hear too. The other cool part about your website as part of your sales team and compared to the rest of your sales team, your website's never going to go golfing, right? During the middle of the day, it's never going to call in sick. It's never going to party too hard on Super Bowl Sunday and not right. either on Monday. Um, you make this investment, like you're saying, Sue, it just works, right? It just works for you uh, the entire time. It's always, always selling. So, um, all right, super topic. Um, thanks for posing the question, Sue, and kind of firing off um, the information to get that discussion going. Uh, everybody else out there, if you have something you want us to talk about, a topic, a question, something you're looking for answers on, uh, let us know. That's what we're here to do, uh, to kind of bring that to light and, and talk through it with you and, and give whatever expert advice we can give and, uh, and help you out. Um, if it's something that we don't know, we're going to tap into our friends and our experts and, and bring that answer for you too. So uh, go on up to localseotactics.com, go down to the bottom left corner. Click the link that says submit a question. You can uh, submit it via our form and just type it in there. Uh, or if you would, and we would rather you do because it's much more dynamic and fun, uh, record that. To call in, we have a phone number. You basically call in, leave a voicemail. And if you do that, we'll use it on the show to ask the question. Um, so Sue can take a couple minute break and not have to read it. Uh, we can just play it and get you on the show. And then also if you do that, we're gonna mail you off one of these uh, awesome Intrix t-shirts which I'm always modeling. So check it out, localizotactics.com, bottom left corner. Um, any final thoughts from anybody? Good to go? Good to go. It's like a typical Zoom meeting where people always ask that. Just, no, <laughs> no we're good. We're good. All right. Uh, thanks for tuning in, everybody. We will catch you on the next episode. Take care. Thanks.